Red Sex University, Dubai. If you are taking the pictures, I'll go on this side because then I'm blocking the, uh, not only the projector but also our roller. By the way, on this roller, you will see this QR, obviously we are here, but you can get more information from the website as well. <coughs> Those of you who not heard the name of this university, which is called Middlesex University, this is a university, it's a very fast growing, high quality university based in north of London. We are representing the Dubai campus of this particular institution, so we are an international branch campus of Middlesex University, and we established in 2005, so we've been around for a number of years now, and we have grown not only in terms of the number of students, but the quality of students. Students currently, and from Dubai standards, this is the most multi cultures in Dubai, but obviously mainly the cat classes are held at the North. Besides from the back, all the which is Middlesex University Dubai, which is on the top of the list, not only for the KHDA rating, KHDA is our regulatory body, just like you have HEC here. This is a regulatory body in the in UAE. And then similarly, the UK university ratings as well. So clearly, if you come to Middlesex University of Dubai, you'll be part of this community, this family of students, which is the largest UK university in Dubai. And obviously, when you grow, there is a reason. You grow because of quality. You grow because Looking at these ratings, so this is obviously numbers, we also five star rated. So that's the highest rating that you get in Dubai. And these ratings are based on obviously the quality of education. Ratings are based on facilities. Ratings are based on teaching team. Ratings are based on lab. Ratings are based on student experience as well. So if I actually go back to this slide, one of the main things that we really boost about is providing the student experience. We are not just talking about knowledge. We are not just saying we're going to teach you Java <coughs> or uh, web development that you're learning already. Whatever modules you're learning is not just the knowledge, it's the skills as well. It gives you a complete experience believing in producing well-rounded graduates and students. These are our two campuses, at the city and all. For you guys, these are the two programs that you're eligible for if you finish your advanced diploma. Some of the unique selling points for this department, students studying under this umbrella, this is a three-year honors degree. So you do one year with us, but you get this honors degree, which is equivalent to a three-year honors degree, which is a classic format for uh, many all UK institutions, all British universities. Um, we have very, very highly qualified faculty members. All faculty <coughs> members have had some industry experience. So we do not hire faculty who are just straight out of college and have not worked in the industry. We do not hire a faculty who do not have a certification in higher education. I'm not talking about their knowledge expertise. Yes, each one of them are experts in the areas of data science, robotics, web development, software engineering, programming, you name it but they are qualified to teach as well. So there is a certification in the UK, which is called the Postgraduate Certification in Higher Education. We are facilitator of facilitator of the ownership of your we facilitate that process. Learning is a multi-way process. You learn from us, you learn from each other, we learn from you. That's what our philosophy of teaching and learning is all about. We've got state-of-the-art labs, so yes, most of the labs are general purpose, like the labs that I have seen at your different centers. But then we have specialized labs as well for robotics, for data science, for virtual reality, for engineering and physical computing. Those are mainly for our postgraduate programs, but students who come into third year and when they are working on the final year projects, they can use those labs. So there's nothing stopping you from taking up a project in your third year, which is related to VR, for example, or data analytics or robotics. And you can use all these labs. We have state-of-the-art labs with, you name it, all the software and hardware that each that those particular labs require. Um, we work on a lot of social causes as well. And this is something I really like mentioning this because I personally feel that when you're talking about well-rounded individuals, individuals having awareness about social causes like breathing, getting the girls in the classroom. Here your means students with learning differences. We don't use the word disability. We don't say student has a learning disability. We just say this student learns dis uh, differently. We have students who are on aut autism spectrum. I have a student who is 
uh, deaf and dumb actually, learning and uh, 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 we work with them to support them. We believe everybody has equal access, should have equal education and learning and we support that. That's a very unique thing that our university provides. Not many institutions do that. I personally do know a lot of institutions and teachers who tell students who are on, for example, on this autism spectrum saying, oh, you give me a headache and, you know, don't talk to me like this. They don't understand what this child is going through, for example. So not only in terms of learning, so that's my wonderful team. And as I'll talk to you, English Miss, the department offering, will answer that question in a minute. So everything to do with entry criteria, we get to that in a minute. So this is about the program. So these are the two programs that you will uh, are eligible to apply for, which is BSc for Information Technology and BSc for Business Information Tech Savvy. Likes development, likes programming, can work hours coding. BIS is for a student who likes technology but doesn't like the back end development work quite a lot. Either is not good at it or doesn't enjoy it. In that case, you are good at you understand technology, but you like the applications of technology in the business world. That is what the BIS program is all about. So if you're very good in terms of technical work, in terms of development, in terms of programming, BSC IT is the program for you. If you still want to be in the field of technology, but don't want to be in the back end programming and coding and developing stuff, rather be in the front end. You want to be a business analyst, you want to be a systems analyst, you want to be a UX UI designer then BIS program is for you, okay? So you will see the modules or the courses, if I may use that word. You have a compulsory project module. So irrespective of IT or BIS, you have to do an independent development or research project. But then there are a lot of optional modules, which are either some of them are specific to IT, some are specific to BIS, and some are common. We have had a session with your counselors as well, so they have been now trained better in terms of what is the difference of the programs and what these option modules are all about. But just to give you an overview, option modules range from very tech subjects to very BIS type of subjects as well. For example, AI, artificial intelligence, web development, uh, uh, app development, um, we have strategic information systems, so that's an application module. We have a very good module on innovation and technology. That is for students which is more of a data analytics module. So some are very IT specific, some are BIS, and some are kind of in the middle. So we guide and counsel us, but again, our counselors are already well so That is also possible. So that kind of shift is also allowed. This is something just from the labs. I have some pictures about the labs. As I said, not only just the general purpose labs, but we also have state-of-the-art uh, labs in robotics, most of these names, right? You, you've heard of Cisco, you've heard of IBM probably, you've heard of Dell, uh, SAS, SAP, Excel, Toshiba. These are not just tech companies, yes they are. These are the tech companies that we partner with. We have formal partnerships with all these organizations and our students tremendously benefit. How? Field trips, guest speakers, placement opportunities, um, and workshops and courses that they offer. This is what I was talking about. A lot of courses and workshops which help the student determine their career path. So for example, you're a BSc, you come as a BSc IT student, but if you're exploring cyber security and penetration testing or digital forensics as your area of specialization, we'll put you on some pathways, some courses from Cisco and probably from EC Council, which are cyber security related companies. Cisco is not a cyber security only, it's obviously a networking company. But they offer a lot of that. So we'll help you map that career pathway. So by the time you graduate and you do your undergrad, either you go on to your post-graduation in these specialized fields, which is again cyber security, VR, robotics, data science, or if it's a little extra study, you can go and work in these areas as well. So generalist world is kind of ending. Specialization is what more employers are looking for, in addition to obviously soft skills as well. Maria is going to talk about careers. We are also very big on promoting student research. It's very rare uh, and unique for an undergraduate institution to emphasize a research culture at undergraduate level is something that we're very, very big on. So as part of your final year projects, you'll be undertaking a lot of research work. Even if it's a development project that you're doing, it's 
starts with research. Research is really something that lies at the heart of any academic career. So you will open your research profile as part of your undergraduate studies. We've had so many students who have published at undergrad level. When I say publish, we're talking about publishing in academic journals. We're talking about uh, presenting in academic conferences. So starting your research profile there. Especially if you want to go on for your postgrad studies, research becomes very, very important. So we have this Office of Student Research at the university which I chair myself. And we work very closely to encourage, to promote, to nurture student research work at the university. Center for Innovation and Human Experience. Also, my baby, I would say. There are three specialized labs in this particular center. Students, we obviously do a lot of work, consultancy development for the industry, but our students can be part of these projects. That's where your experience comes in. Many a time, the students or fresh graduates, you face this problem of do you have work experience? And you say, well, no, sorry, this is my first job. How do I have work experience, right? So, work opportunities like this, working at the center, working in the university as a student intern, so many opportunities are available to you. So, you acquire work experience while you are studying at the university. So, if we can just sum it up, uh, I'm just going this slide, it's needed for the later. Uh, if I sum it up, start thinking about why Middlesex University Dubai, because at this start thinking with asking this question, why Middlesex University or any XYZ University? Think about under what department this program falls in, what are the offerings of the department, what is the program, what is the advantage that I'm going to have if I go to this university as opposed to another university. And with all this information that you gather, make an Excel sheet for yourself with all this uh, criteria and choose the one which suits best according to where you want to go to. That is what I call making an informed decision. Any questions for me before I sit down and Maria is going to answer all questions which are related to visa and fees and every criteria and everything else. Any academic questions that I can address? Alright, I'm here if something comes to your mind.
Now let's talk about what documents are required, uh, are required and what's the entry. Of course, you need to pass your diploma and submit that to us. So you get this diploma and your six month, uh, six semester transfer. Number two, and somebody asked earlier as well, is IELTS required? required? We do have a mandatory English language requirement. So yes, IELTS, TOEFL, or Pearson's PTE academic is a mandatory requirement that you will need to meet. For the, whoever asked about IELTS, we need a transfer of six. Yes. Uh, if somebody has an IFT from NCC UK. Uh, so, like you've done an IELTS test with someone. No, I'm saying NCC UK. I, uh, I'm, I'm actually a student of the University of London recently. I'm doing law from here. And I'm asking you, I've done NCC UK. Uh, yes, I, have done, I have the International Foundation Diploma from NCC UK. You have the Foundation Diploma yes. from there. And that's a UK university? That, that is something we can look into. So if students have studied in a UK institute before, they could be able to see if that foundation program is recognized with us and then give you that answer. Okay? Is uh, recommendation letters. If you get just even one recommendation letter from your active teachers, that should be sufficient. And your passport. So just these five documents. You submit that and that's it. Now, what are the next steps? Once you have applied, you have your offer lecture and you wish to proceed with your tuition, you will need to make an initial tuition fee deposit of 3,000 euros. Now, this is not an application fee, this is not a registration fee. It's part of your tuition fees. So it's part of the package cost that I talked about. So you pay 3000 to secure your admission. Once you've secured your admission, you are required to submit all of your documents so you can go from an unconditional status to, an, uh, to a conditional status. Then the next step would be to apply for your student visa, which we will help you out with. And once you get your visa, you can book the accommodation, you can book your room over there. And that's it. Then you come to the vibe, you chill there, you have fun in your doctor's classes, and then inshallah you graduate with a UK degree. So that is all the steps of our application. I will put my contact details on the screen. I have my direct email and my WhatsApp line over here. If you want to take pictures, you can do that. Uh, but if you think of our thing to apply, do get in touch with me and I can help you out. You are, of course, encouraged to individually go to the website and apply because that is the second best way to get in touch with me directly. But this is the first. So that concludes my part of the presentation. Now, let's start our Q&A session. So do let me know if you have any questions about anything I talked about, or you want me to cover anything that I may not have talked about. Yes, a student's high school background is irrelevant to the application process, because your admission will be based on your ADC diploma only. If there is a student here with an O-level background, is there anyone here with an O-level background? Okay. If anyone here is with an O-level background, which you are, if you have a C or above in English, you won't have to do IELTS. So uh, that is one thing. O-levels, uh, if uh, they did it in uh, the school, like uh, I've done uh, grade 7. Uh, uh, so O-levels is grade 10 and 11 in the British curriculum school, so we only accept that. And it's if they get the grade for English. What is your grade in English? A. A. So you won't need to do IELTS if you apply. But upload your O level certificate so we can verify that. Any other questions? Okay. So yes, you can. By default, you can pay in four installments per year. Uh, however, once you have paid the visa fees, and for visa, you need to pay 25% of your because that's the immigration requirement. But once you've paid that and you come to Dubai, come to me, I can, uh, you know, divide the four installments to like more, like six or eight installments per instance. Questions? What other questions? Okay. Um, what about the history teacher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so another thing is, uh, I don't want to stay at this accommodation. My visa, you don't have to come on our visa as well. For guys, if you get a company visa, you don't have to come on our visa. And on the topic of company visa, if during your studies you get a job opportunity and they are giving you a full uh, type of company visa, you can switch from student visa to company visa. That's also no problem for us. <coughs> yeah. uh, what are the uh, early wages in Dubai? The what? Early wages in Dubai. 
wages. Hourly wages. Wages. Hourly wages. Hourly wages. Hourly wages. Hourly wages. It will really depend on the job. Yeah. Or does that concept of minimum wages like in the US? Yeah. It depends on the job opportunity. Some could be, if it's an internship, it could be unpaid as well. If it's a part time job, um, yeah. in the IT field, you have to really have to. Yeah, yeah. It depends on your all the friends. Yes. This is top up and you have to try that. Uh, is it usually available in the Dubai branch or is no. it available in the UK? It's or? in the UK and Mauritius branch as well. But this uh, this package that we're offering is a bit more affordable than the UK campus. But you're getting it in the yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yes. Can we be a student of both universities at the same time? Like I'm currently a student of the University of Canada. So Because for LLB you cannot transfer, but if you obviously I don't want to transfer, yeah. I want to do both of these things further. Yeah, you can do that. Um so he's saying so you you continue your graduation with the University of London and then come to us for the top up. Or, or at the same time. At the same time. I think we have some Are you doing that distance program? The University of yes. London program is distance. But you want to do this in Dubai because this is not distance. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was thinking of maybe going to you know UK and doing both of these things. Yeah, then you need to check with the UK campus if they don't allow that. Right. Yeah, yeah, but, but like there no, are just some... talking about the Dubai campus. Okay, but if I'm doing the distance learning, uh, then can I be a part of the uh, University of uh, sorry, Middlesex University as well? That I don't is... see a major concern here, but if you share your documents with us and yeah. apply, then we will do it. But you want to do final year IT with us and final year law at the same time? Okay. If you can do that, but that's going to be super hectic. But I don't see my law. Any other questions? All right, great. Then on that note, thank you so much for your attention and your patience. Whatever you decide, whether your future takes you to Middlesex University Dubai or any place else, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.